Hey there! I hope everybody's doing well. Last time we took a look at the complete book of U.S. Military Pocket Knives by Michael Silvey. And I had a reader comment, hey, slow down, you could have spent a half an hour on that. <laughs> well, probably so, but I intended to come back and uh, take a look at the book a little more as I showed you the few military pocket knives that I own. I have about a half a dozen here to show you and I'll reference them in the book as we take a look at them. Now the first one that I'm going to show you, I've done a video on already, and um, so I won't spend a lot of time on that, and I'll reference the video up here on the screen. But this is the U.S. Army 10th Mountain Division, um, or Devil's Brigade pocket knife. And this was issued to the U.S. Army 10th Mountain Division uh, skiing troops. And it was a little different because it was probably one of the first U.S. pocket knives to have a Phillips screwdriver on it uh, to tighten their ski bindings. So this is a uh, kind of a junior size Scout. It's a five blade model with the addition of that Phillips. And um, yeah, the only place that's really marked uh, is here on the back of the bale. To mark to indicate that it was uh, military U.S. If we can see that. And then the tank stamp is uh, Ulster. Ulster is the only company to make these. And again, you know, they're going to have um, they're going to have steel liners and bolsters, uh, like so many um, wartime pocket knives. Uh, this is probably my rarest and scarcest military pocket knife. Uh, they are available. You can find them from time to time on um, places like eBay. Expect to pay uh, north of $100 for them, I, I guess just because of the cool factor. You know, the Devil's Brigade had these. It was kind of a subunit of the 10th Mountain Division and one of the forerunners to a special forces group. So uh, that's in the book on page, there's three pages, several different variations of these, but this one in particular uh, you'll find on page 108 of Michael Silvey's book. Okay, well next up is a far more common U.S. military pocket knife, the World War II Engineer's pocket knife. And uh, millions of these were made, uh, most by Camillus. Uh, Camillus was very prolific in making pocket knives for, uh, during World War II, but they were also made by Ulster and Imperial and PAL and uh, Utica and Kingston, which was a a joint effort between Ulster and Imperial, Western, etc. Uh, most of them will not have a badge or any particular military marking on them. They will have bone covers and uh, steel bolsters and liners, although early in the war some did have brass liners and uh, nickel silver bolsters. Again, most of them with no badge. If you can find one with a badge, uh, it's, it's usually worth more. The most common um, maker is going to be Camillus. To find other uh, cutlers is going to be a little tougher. Most common badge is USA, and that stands not in this case for United States of America, but for United States Army. And there's several other badges representing different branches of the service. There's uh, USMC for the Marines, United States Marine Corps. There's USN for United States Navy. There's uh, MD dash USN for Medical Department of the U.S. Navy. And then uh, slightly after the war, Camillus actually made one with black plastic scales with a badge that said AAF for Army Air Force um, back when the Air Force was still part of the U.S. Army. So yeah, this is a, a 3 and 5 8 inch equal length four bladed scout utility pattern. You know, you've seen it a million times uh, with a bale. And they're not really high quality knives. Um, these are going to have bone covers again, carbon steel blade and tools, steel bolsters and liners usually. Uh, you can just kind of see that these are not as high quality as a you know retail knife from Camillus. The tools kind of seem crude and stamped out. Uh, these were strong, sturdy, utilitarian knives, but they were not ever made to be you know showpieces or collector's items. Uh, here's the punch. Again, it's kind of a little more crude affair. And uh, then here's the blade. It's just a spear blade with a crescent nail nick. Now this one again is Camillus. And it's going to read Camillus on the top line. 
Cutlery Co. second line, Camillus NY third line, and USA fourth line. So this is Camillus's four line stamp that they used up until 1946. Uh, after that, it was a three-line stamp. If you're looking for a, 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 a World War II issued knife, um, you know, you'd probably want to look for the steel. And um, a badge is great if you can get it. But with Camilla, certainly you probably want to look for that four-line stamp because the three-line stamp from 47 and on is probably after the war. Uh, this knife is featured on a couple of pages here in the book. Um, page 82 and I believe the bottom here on page 83 so this is this knife here one thing I guess I should explain is um, why uh, so many World War II era pocket knives have steel bolsters and liners um, the reason is brass was being requisitioned and used for wartime purposes mostly munitions casings and um, so there went the brass liners and you can't make nickel silver without brass so um, also they were doing the same with copper I uh, don't know if you've ever seen a penny from 1943 but it happens to be steel okay so that brings us to the knife that in 1944 or 1945 replaced that bone covered engineers knife this all metal knife which was simply called the um, knife comma pocket comma general purpose uh, military spec mil dash K 818 so this is commonly referred to as a milk knife or a demo knife and demo being short for demolition um, the incorrect story or rumor was that this was all non-magnetic metal and therefore it was used to defuse landmines and other ordnance uh, by demolition teams but it really didn't have that type of a special purpose. It was generally issued at first to the U.S. Marine Corps. So this is the, the very first iteration of this, and it's stamped U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, and then later in World War II, uh, to the Army. And they, uh, Army versions, will just have a blank st uh, steel scale here, or they'll say U dot S dot. Now the Marine version, the very first version, had a little different tool layout. The screwdriver cap lifter was on the same end as the main blade. And uh, the can opener and the punch were on the other end. The screwdriver and the blade laid in the middle, and the can opener and the punch laid to the outside. Uh, when they were issued to the Army, they swapped the screwdriver for the can opener. The screwdriver appears down here on the bail end, and the tools alternated. So a little difference. Um, they both had, at the time, brass liners. Um, only two companies made these in World War II, the first being Kingston, which I think I just already mentioned was a joint venture between um, Imperial and Ulster, and a company by the name of Stevenson in 1945 only. And those you can find with Stevenson stamped on this front side of the bale, or Stevenson 45. Now these were carbon steel tools, and again, brass liners. Uh, after World War II, they went away for a while. Uh, they resurfaced in 1949 when Camillus uh, produced some again, and those were date stamped 1949. By the way, these uh, World War II ones won't have any type of tank stamp, maker or date. Uh, after 1949, they went away again, and then they resurfaced uh, in 1957 or 1958. I'm not sure which. I know 58 for sure. And when they came back out the second time, they were uh, all steel. So no more brass liners, spacers. And again, the tool configuration was can opener on the main blade end and alternating tool layers. Next up in my rather modest collection of World War II military knives is a Navy General Utility Knife. This is a 3 and 3 8 inch swell in jack knife, an easy open jack with bone covers and a steel bolster and cap and liners and a bale. Carbon steel blades, it has a pen blade with a nice half stop and a spear master blade. This one happens to be made by Camillus 
And uh, here's their four line tang stamp again, which would indicate it was made before 1946. So that and the steel, um, you know, indicate that this is a World War II military knife. Other companies did make this knife. Uh, Utica made it, PAL made it, Imperial. And there are some that are marked on the tang simply made in USA. Those are probably Kingston knives. Again, that joint operation between Ulster and Imperial. That's a sweet little knife. It's in great shape. And you can find that specific knife in Michael Silvey's book on page 101. The last World War II military pocket knife I have to share with you is the ubiquitous TL-29 uh, electrician's knife. TL stood for Tool for Lineman. Uh, don't ask me what happened to 1 through 28. These actually first appeared um, in World War I as a Signal Corps knife. They were more of a sleeve board jack with a back lock. This is like a swell end bareheaded jack and uh, it has a liner lock. Uh, the bolsters on these are steel and the liners are either going to be steel or brass. This one's brass. They had a very long screwdriver and uh, served also with a sharpened area down here as a wire stripper and then I think maybe just like an insulation puller here because that's not sharpened. It does have a half stop and uh, it locks with a brass liner lock that was actually patented by Cataragas in 1906. Uh, here on the blade you can see that it says to release, push center, lock to left. And then it has a long spear master blade, a crescent nail pull. Mine is a cut master, it reads cut master, Utica, New York, USA. Cut master was Utica. Uh, also these knives were made by Powell, Camillus, Case, Ulster, Cataragus, K-Bar, Schrade. Robeson, Remington, this kind of a who's who of American knife makers. Cutmaster would often fill that stamped TL-29 on the handle with white paint like you can see here. And Camillus and Utica often used gold paint. There have been a lot of civilian versions of this knife. A common or Klein tools, but if you're looking for a World War II one, look for steel bolsters, wooden handle, a stamped TL-29 or a TL-29 badge. This knife appears on Michael Silva's book of U.S. military pocket knives on page 153. Those have been my World War II pocket knives. Thanks for watching.